there. Nimesh Chandan is with us, CIO at Bajaj FinServe Asset Management. Uh, Nimesh, uh, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, 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 Nimesh, so tell us what uh, you've been, you and your team have been doing uh, at uh, Bajaj FinServe AMC. Uh, markets have done very well and uh, it's been like a rising tide. Uh, and will, will the uh, tide keep rising? Uh, are we going to see a little, little bit choppy waters here? What's your sense? Uh, good afternoon, Prashant. Good to be on your show. Well, at Bajaj Finserv AMC, we've been bullish on the equity markets and we are seeing the trend play out. We measure the markets on two different parameters. One is on the fundamental basis and we also measure a behavioral or a sentiment index which tells us the direction that the market mood is. And uh, we find that uh, at this level, Nifty is close to its uh, fair value, not overvalued. Uh, the small cap and the mid cap space are about 20 to 25 percent overvalued. And in terms of the behavioral index, we still see positive signs. So we believe that uh, at least the large cap space can continue to drift upwards even from these levels, uh, despite the concerns that we are hearing for the last three days. Uh, Nimesh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, would love to hear more about this behavioral indicator. We don't discuss it that often. Usually we, we stick to, you know, discussing price to, uh, price to earnings, price to book, just pure valuation metrics. So tell us why, what do you mean by this behavioral indicator and why does it give you the comfort that perhaps there's some more upside to this market? So this is a study we've been doing uh, for quite some time and now we have a back data of about 20 years on how this index works. The idea is that markets like a pendulum don't uh, stop at its fair value. They don't stop at the center. They swing based on optimism and pessimism. Uh, sometimes numbers create stories, sometimes stories create numbers. So people get uh, involved in the market with emotions and we need to gauge which side this pendulum is moving. And uh, typically when people are bullish, uh, they express it in terms of price action in certain asset classes. Like for example, a simple way would be like, you know, the action between small cap and large cap. It tells you where the market is bullish or bearish in terms of government uh, securities and corporate bonds, where the markets are more keen uh, to pick up, say, the spreads in the corporate bonds versus government securities or DMs versus EM. So we have about 16 different data points that consolidate into this behavioral index. And this index has been right 75% of the time in the signal that it provides us. In fact, we've launched a balance advantage fund on the basis of this index. And uh, right now, so the index gave a bull call in uh, April of 2023 and continues to be on the bullish side, even currently. Okay. About the bottom, right? I guess April 23 is when, you know, this fantastic rally really began last year. <laughs> no, absolutely. In the broader market, right? Mid caps and small cap, yeah. the move really began. But the market's at the day's low now. Uh, so just a quick point there. Uh, so two, uh, 22, 263 was the low. We are at 22, 268. Uh, as things stand right now, and uh, it's it's interesting because let me just take a look at what uh, where the largest pressure is coming from. It's banks mainly. If you can have ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank between the both of them, uh, that's about 80 index points gone. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, bulk of the pressure at the day's low. ICICI Bank and a, a similar will be the case for HDFC Bank as well. Uh, you look at uh, the other ones, of course, are TCS. T, uh, TCS, of course, is uh, under pressure, down 1.5%. Infosys, which we'll report this week, that's down as well. Uh, it's adding about 10, 12 index points. There's uh, a few others as well. But, I mean, this is the bulk of where the pressure is really uh, coming from. There's only one, uh, actually two names, uh, ONGC and Hindalco, which are doing anything of sort of meaningful uh, sort of pulling on the other side, lifting on the other side. Otherwise, it's uh, down and out. So, 22, 266 very, very close to the morning lows and slight, un, just under below uh, the very short-term moving averages, which is the 20-day average, which as of yesterday's close was at about 22,270. I mean, a kind of decisive close under it uh, will uh, start to uh, open up more downsides, at least in the very near term. That's been the experience. I mean, it's acted as a very good indicator uh, for the short term, at least. Uh, Nimesh, uh, what, uh, what, would you, uh, <clears throat> what would you do uh, at, uh, in terms of sectors and sort of preferences and what you would be bullish on, where you would be cautious. Give us some color. So let's take 
market segment by segment. Uh, we are seeing more opportunities in large caps compared to mid and small. So the risk return payoff is better here. Although I would also say in the same breath that the market cap of the company doesn't tell you anything about the wealth creation opportunity in that company. So for example, today if at our fund, we get an idea which is a good business and a good management at reasonable valuations. We won't reject it just because it's a small cap uh, company. But as a category, there seems to be more better risk return payoff in the large caps. In terms of styles, we believe quality is a style where you see actually a good contrarian bet can be taken. So companies uh, in the quality side, which have good cash flow, good return on capital, some of them which have underperformed for last three, five years are at the cusp of a turnaround. Some of them could be in the consumer side, some of them on the chemical side, some of these sectors which have not performed or contributed uh, are likely to see an upturn. There are already green shoots in these segments and we are taking some of the contrarian calls in these uh, sectors. Now, regarding some of the export-oriented companies, possibly the first half of the year is a bit soft. Maybe we start seeing some recovery in the second half and specifically in the fourth quarter, we should see some normalization of business there because globally we are seeing some kind of a downturn, but hopefully in six months, we see a soft landing and bottoming out of uh, these sectors. Mm, okay, uh, so those are uh, sort of some ideas that you're working with. I was just looking at some stocks that are moving right now, and now one of them that really catches the eye is Ashiana Housing, 16% up in a weak market, decent volumes as well. The market cap of this company is closer to 3,800 crores, and what seems to have gotten the market excited is the fact that they apparently sold out all of their 224 flats in a Gurgaon project in a matter of 15 minutes. Now, that's Ashiana Housing for you, and that's the real estate market for you. Nimesh, what are your thoughts? I mean, uh, uh, true to form, a lot of these companies of all sizes, all hues, they have been reporting very good sales numbers. The stocks have also moved up. How are you looking at real estate and the ancillary plays? Real estate is actually in a very good cycle. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in the residential bookings. So we are, I think, at a, close to the all-time high in terms of bookings or probably just crossing that. Uh, on the commercial side also, if you see in India, we've seen a lot of these uh, co-share, uh, co-workspace sharing companies picking up large chunks of good real estate. And also a lot of MNCs picking up, uh, uh, say, commercial spaces uh, in the country. So real estate is, I think, in a very sweet spot. We should see continuation of this good time for the next few years. Uh, as a house, we are also looking at some of the ancillary plays that come when real estate starts moving. So this is one sector that is good for the economy. It impacts several other sectors. So we are looking at companies, say, in uh, the pipes, uh, uh, tiles, faucets, uh, so all the ancillary plays that come, including the ceiling fan, AC, everything. So uh, maybe from here on, we will see some kind of a downstreaming of activity and business going there. Some of those companies are positioned with good brands and good valuations. Mm, white goods, right? I mean, durables, basically, where uh, there could be uh, some interest which comes back. Chemicals, uh, Nimesh, did you touch upon that? That's a co contrarian call, right? Uh, that you guys are making. Uh, so, is Absolutely. it agri-chemicals, is it specialty, bulk? Thing. Sorry, go on. So, one of the first, uh, I think, houses who uh, came and said that we are positive on chemicals. We are seeing signs of bottoming out. Uh, we've been talking to companies, looking at different segments. It's large space chemicals. We are seeing definite signs of turnaround and sequential improvement in uh, business as well as uh, prices. Some segments, for example, agrochemicals is still a bit slow, but uh, diachemicals and pigments, specialty chemicals, they are all seeing a good turnaround and we should see some sequential pickup in them. The good thing is market has been like you're not expecting much from these companies. They have been underperformers for quite some time. Though some of them have very good return on capital and good growth plans. Uh, they have been lingering at the same level as last three years and maybe at the lowest valuations they were in the last three to five years. So this is a very good area to go fishing. You'll find more fishes and less water. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's good to hear. That's good to know. So I guess that's the pond to be in. Uh, good conversation, Nimesh. Thank you very much. We hope to see you more often on the show. Really appreciate you taking out the time. All with 
Thanks for tuning in to CNBC TV 18. And for more news and updates, follow us on all the social media platforms.